So for our second lesson today, it should be pretty short. A lot of students in the past, this is a pretty easy lesson. So there are three properties of logarithms. We have the product property, the quotient property, and the power property. These are listed for you, again, on your reference sheet that I'll give you for your final and your test. So here we have to have positive numbers, m and n, and b. B can't equal one, your base can't be one. So anytime we're given a log, doesn't matter what the base is, we're just gonna say log base B, and we have two numbers that are being multiplied together, or two things, it could be two times four, it could be two X. Either way that happens, we're gonna separate into two logs. Those two logs get separated, the M gets split from the N, and they're separated into two logs, keeping the same base, so this base has stayed the same, and then we put addition in the middle. So we can expand multiplication with two logarithms being added together, splitting the two terms that are being multiplied into the two separate logs. If I added M in O, if I added O at the end, I could add another log base B of O. So I could do it as many times as I want. Each one gets separated with addition when it's multiplication. If we look at the quotient property, the quotient property, we have log base B. Again, B could be whatever it wants except for one, and it must be positive. Here we have M divided by N. So M divided by N gets separated a little bit differently because now we have subtraction. Keep in mind whatever number or term is on top, is part of the first log, whatever's on the bottom is part of the second log. So order does matter when you use the quotient property. The denominator is what gets subtracted. And a lot of times I tell my students, think about a fraction. A fraction has this fraction bar that kind of looks like a minus sign. So you might be able to remember it that way. If you have division, that division bar looks like subtraction. So you're subtracting the two logs. Top, we always read top to bottom. So top comes first, then the bottom. And the reverse is true, you can condense them. If I give you two subtractions, or a subtraction with a log, the bases are the same, you can put them back together using that quotient or the division there. And then the last one, the power property, if you have log base B of M to the X power, so I have this exponent, that exponent can get moved down in front of the log as it is here. So that exponent can get brought down and be multiplied by the log, nothing else changes. The exponent just moves to the front. And again, the same thing's true if it's out front, you can move it up to be an exponent if it benefits you that way. So looking here, we're going to start off by condensing. So we're gonna start with the expanded form and we're going to condense them. So we have to decide if we're going to use the product, the quotient, or the power property for these. So in this case, since we have addition, we're going to use the product property. So using the product property, I keep the log, I keep the base. These two things get multiplied together. And for these, I want to know if you can condense them correctly. I don't care if you know what two times four is. So you can write two times four and be done with it. You don't have to write eight, you can write two times four. I know this one, everybody knows what two times four is, but when we get to more complicated things, you don't have to multiply them together. I wanna know if you can condense them and you know that when you condense them, you must multiply. So for the second one, again, we're using that same product property because we have addition, but this time we have three. So we're gonna keep the log and we're gonna keep the base. So log base two stays the same. And then on the inside of my parentheses, I'm going to multiply these three things. And again, I'm not checking to see if you can multiply five times six times X. I wanna know if you know that you're gonna multiply all these together at some point. So five times six times X, don't have to actually multiply it together. You could write 30 X, but I'm really just looking to see if you can get to that point. So that's condensing using the product property. So we had all addition, so when we condensed them, it went to all multiplication. 
Next thing we're gonna look at a couple subtraction problems. So keep in mind for subtraction, the subtraction looks like a division bar. So we're gonna have log. And again, we're keeping that base. The bases are both four. So we're keeping that four. And then we're gonna have division. 12 goes on top because it was first. Four goes second because it was last. And again, like the last slide, all I'm checking to see is if you can write this correctly using the correct property, in this case, the quotient property, I don't care if you can take 12 and divide it by four. For the next one, we have log base three of seven minus log base three of y. They're both log base threes, so I'm copying down the log base three. And then for what goes inside my parentheses, I have a minus sign, so it is going to be another quotient. The first number goes on top, the seven goes on top, the second one goes on bottom, so seven divided by y. <clears throat> so that's condensing using our quotient property. The last property is the power property. Power property just says any number that is an exponent can be brought down out front, or any number out front in this case can be brought up to become an exponent. So really this is log. There's no base written, so it must be base 10 of four squared. Well, I guess it's this. So this is base 10, that's why there's no base written. So just be aware of that. The next one does actually have a base written. It doesn't change your problem any. It's just you have to write a six now. So log base six of x to the third. The three gets brought up to become an exponent. So now we're going to combine them using multiple steps. So we're gonna condense using multiple properties. The first thing I always warn my students to check for is the power property. So first thing I wanna look for when I'm condensing is to make sure there are no numbers written out front of your logs. So when I look in front of my logs, first thing I notice I have this five, that five's gotta go. So this five gets moved up here. So I have log x to the fifth power minus log so now I've gotten rid of the numbers out front using my power property. Then I have to decide how do I get these two logs condensed down into one. So in this case, since it's subtraction, I'm gonna use the quotient property. For the numerator, we have x to the fifth. The denominator, we have plain old four. And again, this is base 10, so that 10 is not necessarily written, but it needs to be understood. For the second question, we're going to take the three, bring it up, the two, bring it up. So log base eight of n to the third plus log base eight of m squared. So we're moving that three up, moving the two up. This time when we go to condense, we have addition. When we have addition, we think the product property. So log base 8 of n to the third times m to the second. So log base 8 of n to the third m squared. Questions on these two? making things more complicated. So three, log two plus log four minus log 16 as one single log. So we're gonna condense them down into one. Again, first thing I always want you to look for is the power property to move things around. So first thing I see this three has to be moved up here. I'm gonna be really, 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 really lazy and I'm just gonna mark that out and not rewrite it. So now we have log two to the third power plus log four minus log 16. 
When I look, I have three logs right now. These two logs need to be put together using what property? Mm -hmm, the product. So really that gives me log two to the third times four. We haven't done anything with this minus log 16, so we're just gonna bring it down. <clears throat> now I'm down to two logs. How do I combine these two logs? Product, power, or quotient? Quotient, we have subtraction. So this is going to give us log, base 10, so we don't have to write it. In the numerator, I'm going to have two to the third power times four. And then the denominator is just plain old 16. That would be my final answer. Looking down at the critical thinking question, can you write three log two of nine minus log base six of nine as a single log? No, why not? Mm -hmm. So these cannot be written as one single log. The bases don't match. Which one would I pick? So the bases don't match. They don't have the same bases. So make sure, I think there's a, there are two questions at the beginning of your assignment that ask you to check to make sure the bases match. Normally in algebra two, they always match, but just in case you're ever asked, they have to match if you're going to condense them. Now we're gonna go the opposite direction. So now we're given one log and we're going to expand it into as many as needed. So we're gonna have one log in the original and we're gonna have multiple logs in our answer. So looking at letter A, we're given log base five of X divided by Y. So when I look at this, I have division, which means I'm going to expand using the quotient property. Quotient property says you're gonna have two logs, keep the base, so log base five of the numerator, x minus log base five again of the denominator, in this case, y. So that's, sub, well, that division told me that I was breaking them and separating them to expand using subtraction. The last thing you look for when you expand is any exponents. Anytime you have exponents, they need to be brought down out front. In this case, you don't have any exponents, so you don't need to bring any numbers down. So for the second one, letter B, we have log base 10, <coughs> excuse me, of three R to the fourth power. I need to notice that between this three and this R, the operation is multiplication. Since it's multiplication, I need to use the product property to separate them. So log base 10, I don't have to write the 10. So log of three plus log of R to the fourth. Oh, we're not done yet. No, we're not done yet. So what were you saying about the exponential? What if it would have had exponential? We're getting ready to do it. Oh. So for this one, I'm asking myself, are there any exponents? There is an exponent right here. So when I have that exponent, that exponent is attached to log of r to the fourth. This four gets brought down in front of just that log. It does not get put on the first log. The first log doesn't have any exponents, so nothing's going to change with it. So log of three plus the four gets brought down right here, log of r. So that four as an exponent gets brought down just in front of the log that it's attached to. In the past, I've had students want to share the love and put the fours on all of them, but no, it just goes to the one that it's an exponent 
with. No, 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 you're, you're just jumping ahead and that's fine. Questions on this one? Does it make sense? Okay. A couple more. So we're going to expand log base four of eight M. Take a minute and see if you can decide which property you should use, product, quotient, or power, or um, a bunch of them. You can use more than one. Hopefully you decided to use the product property to expand using addition. So log base four of eight plus log base four of M. For question two, log base seven of M to the third divided by N, that's going to be your quotient property. So log base seven of M to the third minus log base seven of n. I've got this exponent out here that needs brought down out front. So three log base seven of m minus log base seven of n. And that right there would be my final answer. Questions or concerns on this seem pretty easy. So on the next page, you have some problems to work through. I know it looks like a lot, but really when you get into it, it's not gonna take you very long at all. <laughs> 